Hey everyone, my name is Tally. I'm a dev at Teller, the decentralized Oracle. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to read Teller data into your own smart contract. In this tutorial, we're gonna create a sample smart contract that reads data from the Rick and Morty API using Teller. We're gonna deploy our contract to Rinkeby. And finally, we'll tip to Teller, or in other words, we'll incentivize, we'll pay some TRB to incentivize the Teller reporters to update our data over time. Before I get started, I will be referencing a lot of links um, throughout the course of the tutorial. You can see one right here, and you can actually find all the links um, in the description. And as well, I'll be linking them in the in the code here. And finally, in the description of, or the readme of the using Teller, using Teller demo repo. You can see here at using, uh, or github.com slash Teller-io slash using Teller demo. Um, as well, uh, before we get started, we'll want to npm install. And what this will do is install two packages, uh, Hardhat, of course, and using Teller, which is a contract that you can npm install. Uh, it's an npm library, but inside it is a contract that we can use to really easily access um, the Teller functions for reading data into our contract. To import using Teller, what we'll need to do is, and by the way, uh, this, the last thing I'll say before I start typing code is that you can actually follow along with this tutorial, just like I'm doing it, and it will work front to back. And it's basically a Teller integration, which is really cool. And once that uh, is done, if you actually send me um, uh, your deployed contract in a um, transaction hash of a tip, then I will send you an NFT that uh, that I made. I've made 22 of them, so there's plenty to go around. Um, and the NFT is on OpenSea, and each NFT is a photograph that I've taken, just a little bonus for fun. But now that we've NPM installed, we'll want to imp import using Teller slash contracts. You can even see it auto-populating here uh, using Teller.soul. Okay, cool. Um, Oh, and of course, uh, it's a contract and not a library in Solidity using Teller. So we'll want to inherit um, using Teller from our contract. And so we'll say using Teller demo is using Teller. Um, I'm gonna get to this in a minute, um, but before that, we'll just fill out our constructor. All we need to do is put in a payable uh, Teller address. Um, and then as well, we want to fill in the um, instructor of using Teller itself. And what this does in this essentially is point our contract to uh, the Teller Oracle. And for to do that, that's really all we have to do. We actually don't even need to fill anything in for this tutorial um, in the body of our constructor. Um, and as I was mentioning here, we have, um, uh, when it comes to reading values, what's more important almost to, to the story of reading values or the, the procedure that we need to do it is to um, understand how date requests are made on Teller. And if I open this up, um, you can see this links to a repo called data specs. In other words, it's the specifications of a list of types of data that you can request on Teller. Um, you can actually request any data, arbitrary data on Teller, but these are the ones that we've pre-configured and set up so far. Um, you can see here that you may notice there's a query type, a query des description, and query parameters. And so you may notice some familiar language, URL and a parse string. And you'll see that if we want to read value, we may need to put together the URL and the parse args in such a way that Maybe we can build a query data that you see here, and finally a query ID. And so you'll see here that we're going to be building a query data. We're going to hash it to build the query ID. We're going to get our data um, using a using teller getter. And finally, we're going to decode our data into a uint 256. Um, you'll see here that actually for this type, this is a numeric API, API response, which in other words means we're going to call an API and get a number back. Um, and you'll see that if we're getting a number back, uh, we're going to be returning 
uh, U int 256. Okay. To start, we'll build our query data and we actually have a reference here. So for example, here, uh, we'll want to put in the query type in an ABI encoding. And after that, we'll want to ABI encode the URL that we're requesting. And then what we need to parse into uh, the JSON to get um, the number we want. So in this case, we will actually want to get in this API, which is like very long and kind of scary looking. Um, we really just want the count of episodes. So our, that's why I've called my um, parse args info comma count. You'll see we want to parse into info and then parse into count. Like if this were a Python dictionary, or in this case, it's JSON, of course. So we'll build our query data like we saw in the example. Bytes memory query data equals ABI dot encode of numeric API response, and then an inner ABI encoding of the URL and the parse args. Okay. So just to recap, to build our query data, we'll combine the query type, and of course in ABI encoding, we'll combine the query type and the query parameters and convert them into bytes using ABI encoding. Next, um, we're going to build the query data, which are bytes 32, always as they are a hash. Um, we'll simply kekak, I always add that extra C by accident. Uh, kekak 256 of query data. Finally, uh, we can request our data um, from Teller. So we're going to call this getter called get current value. Um, and we're going to paste in our query ID as input. And so get current value re always returns three, uh, always returns three variables. Uh, the first is a Boolean success of the request. The second is bytes memory. And it's the value that we get. Um, and so since the Teller Oracle is data type agnostic, um, all, all um, and since it can support arbitrary data, uh, get current value will return uh, a bytes in um, encoding of the value, which you can always decode, um, which we'll do in the next step, but you can always decode um, into the data type of your choosing. In this case, uh, we continue. Um, the last argument is it's always a timestamp. This is the timestamp that the reporter submitted the value, but we actually don't really need the success. And we don't really need the timestamp. So I'm going to take them out, but it's just always good to show in case you do want to use them. If you fork this, uh, make it a little bit more complex. Um, to decode our data, uh, in this case, we'll actually just want to return it because it's a view function. To recode, decode our data, we're going to want to ABI decode value, and we want to extract a UN 256. So we pass in UN 256 as a second argument in parentheses. Okay, cool. I think this is ready to go. So let's compile it. And by the way, while that compiles, I do want to mention that, uh, cool, it compiled successfully. I want to mention that I set up a dot end dot example that you can use to put in your private key and node URL for the next step, uh, which is just deployment to Ringkeby. Um, so just make sure you have Ringkeby ether and make sure you have a private key that you can put the ether into. Um, but I didn't really want to go over how ethers works because <laughs> we, we, you'll, you can find that in any tutorial, but, um, I did write out this tutorial that uh, already had, I mean, excuse me, I, I already wrote out this script and this script has uh, points to the teller address on Rinkity, um, which you can actually find a list of our addresses um, on the teller docs, um, our deployment addresses ac across different networks in case you want to use another network. It's just building a contract factory, deploying the contract and then making sure that it's deployed. So we can run it and we'll, whoops, you can run it and once we run it, we will get out um, 
contract address. And so EvaScan typically takes a few minutes to like properly load, um, like load and display the uh, contract. So what we'll do is we'll just move on to the next step, which is the final step and is funding our feed. Um, so it's this part is a little bit longer, but it's, it's, it looks a little intimidating, but we can set it up so that um, that it all works out. And as well, if you do want to eventually on your own time, read a value um, from your contract after the teller reporter, the teller data reporters network um, reads your, uh, or it fulfills your request. You can actually paste in the address of your demo here and then call read value and output the result to your terminal. But anyway, uh, our last step is funding the feed. And so what do we mean by that? By funding a feed, we mean we want to actually, and what we can do using what we call auto pay, uh, payments contract, is that we can set up recurring payments um, in all in solidity with only two transactions or three actually, including approval. Um, we can set up recurring payments to the Teller Data Reporters Network um, to maintain uptime on our data feed. And by data feed, I mean the query ID that uh, we are requesting for, to Teller. I did paste in um, the arguments to the two functions we're going to use from Autopay. It's setup feed and fun feed. Um, you can reference them when you, if you want to replace um, the arguments here. Um, I actually, if you're wondering how I got the query data and the query ID out from, um, from, from my contract, I actually went to build, um, I, I went to query ID builder .com. This is a utility that we built, um, in house at Teller. It's free to use and as well open source. So you can fork it or even contribute to it if you'd like, um, all I did was put in numeric API response. So that's the query type as we learned. And I put in the two string arguments. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but basically if I put in some nonsense here, you could see that it would generate the query data and the query ID, which, so if you use your own API uh, with its own parse strings, then you could, uh, use this tool to paste in your own query data and query ID. Um, but anyway, the next um, parameter is the reward as well as the start time. So when we wanna start incentivizing telereporters, um, the, an interval in a window, which is a little complex, but basically just means um, how many, how frequently you wanna set up uh, windows of time that telereporters can um, receive reward for reporting data. And finally, um, before or after that is uh, the funding of the feed. So that's the setting up of the schedule of the feed and then funding the feed um, you can see here is a uh, feed ID, which we create in the previous transaction, uh, the query ID, uh, so that's the data feed identifier and the amount of TRB uh, or teller tokens that we wanna put into this data feed or reward in this data feed over time. Um, but just to recap, uh, that may have been a little confusing, but just to recap, um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a data feed, uh, which is a recurring um, schedule of dispersing tokens uh, to, del to data, re data reporters of on Teller to claim if they report to our query ID, to if they report to our data feed. And as well, um, uh, we're going to finally fund the feed and we're going to fund the feed with an amount of TRB that will disperse um, over time over that interval schedule. So let's run uh, npx hard hat scripts uh, slash fundfeed.js. And this one is going to take a little bit more time to run. Uh, oh, actually not. Um, oh, I forgot to add that we want, I forgot to add that we want to deploy to network Rinkeby. So let me actually MPX hard hat run scripts, deploy network Rinkeby. And so we'll wait for that to run. So we always want to make sure that we include the uh, network flag, right? Um, 
And so that's that's uh finished. So we'll go back up and run fun feed on Rinkaby. So this uh, script may take a little bit longer to run because it waits for the transactions to finish, but you'll see after each transaction, uh, the console will output the transaction hash of each transaction. So of course, uh, we start with um, setting up our feed, uh, which doesn't actually cost any TRB. Then we approve some tokens um, to the auto pay contract or the payments contract so that we can fund a feed um, with those tokens. As a reference, um, we have on some networks, you may want to use, um, you may want to use, okay, great Vitalik tweet, but um, you may want to use this account, uh, the TRB faucet. If you tweet at it, we'll actually give you, um, if you tweet like just, just like this one um, with the network and your address, we'll just send you some TRB on the network. Uh, that you requested to, but as well on this particular contract that I used, uh, some of them will come with a faucet that you can just call on Etherscan, um, which I'll demonstrate right now. Um, the token here. If you go to Rinkaby, if you paste this address into Rinkaby Etherscan, you'll actually see that there's a faucet in the contract, which is really cool. Um, so just put in your address, click right, connect to Web3, of course, and you'll get like a very large amount of test TRB that you can play around with. Um, thanks for watching, uh, hope you enjoy it. And once again, if you finish it, uh, please reach out to me. Reach out to me if you have any questions in general, but if you finish it and you like it and you, you get all the way to the end, then please reach out as I will give you ownership to an NFT of a pretty picture. Thanks so much. This is Tally signing off. See ya.